This vanity is nasty, it's old, it's burnt up, there's rust all over it. I'm gonna show you how to prep it properly for Stone Cold Epoxy. Bring this thing back to the 21st century. Let's do it, stay tuned and enjoy the video. What's up folks, I'm Mitch with Stone Coat Epoxy. I'm back on site and I'm gonna renew this 1968 vanity cultured marble, little green marble tone. We're gonna bring this to the 21st century. Step one, I don't wanna hurt my cabinets and I don't wanna hurt this brand new floor the customer just put in. I'm gonna cover up both before I get going. This floor covering is called Ramboard. You can pick it up at the Home Depot or hardware store. It's impervious. It doesn't allow water to go through it. It's really good when working with epoxy. The epoxy will not saturate through this covering and marry it down to your floor. All right. That's easy. Wow, look at that beauty. Hello. <laughs> now that's awesome. <laughs> oh. Always put a bucket underneath these tail pieces. You get some nasty water that hangs out in here. But that also is what keeps the sewer gas from getting into your sink. I'm gonna use some plastic guys and I'm gonna put this at the bottom of my sink cabinet. I'm gonna cover up the bottom of my sink because epoxy will be coming through the holes in the faucet and down the drain. Our sink lip looks really good. There's no chips or dings on it as well as all my edges. If I had a ding or a big chip out of my sink edge or out of my front edge, I could use some Bondo to repair that but we're in good shape. So I'm gonna get my purple delicate release tape, cover the cabinets cover my walls, put some paper, put some plastic, on to the next step. We have silicone here, so I'm gonna scrape out that silicone, replace it with latex caulking. Uh, silicone likes to repel epoxy, so get rid of the silicone. I'm gonna put some latex in there, let that dry, and then put the bonding primer on. Whenever you have painted or finished cabinets or painted walls, it's best to use a delicate release tape just to do everything absolutely possible not to damage a freshly painted or finished surface. This is three mil plastic already cut to three and a half feet. It works perfect to tape underneath your countertops down to the floor to protect your cabinetry. I'm gonna clean the sink, surface, and backsplash with TSP trisodium phosphate. I'll mist my whole area, let it sit there a few minutes, and then scrub it away with some paper towels. Just with a paper towel, give it a good scrub. Ooh, some of that rust is coming off. Look at that. We don't need epoxy, we're almost cleaning it off. All right, we've cleaned and degreased. It's now time to create a nice mechanical bond by sanding with 60 grit on a random portable sander. Just go on slow, no big deal here, guys. I'm just gonna hit my sink by hand. And the whole goal here is just to rough up that glossy surface.
While this caulking dries and before I put on the bonding primer, I'm gonna mask off above my backsplash. I'm holding my tape a heavy eighth above the backsplash because I'll be painting and I'll be applying epoxy here. And then when I come, I'll remove this paper before all this dries. That way nothing gets in. None of this tape will dry in epoxy. Project is ready for the bonding primer. That's a very thin layer, creates a chemical bond. We're gonna use a roller and a brush. We're gonna go on the bowl. We're gonna go on the surface, the edges, and the backsplash. It dries real quick. We're not gonna go pure white here. We just need a really thin layer. That's all that's necessary. You do not need to make the whole top white. If, you, if, you're under, if your countertop below is coming through, that's totally fine. There's no need to apply a really, really thick coat of this. Just an even thin coat is all that's necessary. Don't forget your back splash. back and apply a gray undercoat, two coats. This is the stone spray color I used on my sister's vanity. My customer saw that video, really liked it, but I went over a white undercoat. She wants the project to look just like this gray. It would go really well with these cabinets. So let's tint this undercoat to match this gray. we go. This is the two coats of undercoat are dry. It's time to apply the stone spray. This stuff is really hard to find at your local hardware store but Stone Coat Countertops is fully stocked up. Jump on over to our website, StoneCoatCountertops.com and check out the Epoxy Color Center. We have four or five colors of the Stone Spray. This stuff is perfect for going over existing surfaces with the bat splash, the sink. We're gonna coat it all right now and the process is very, very, very easy. It's just pumping a spray nozzle and applying it in an even and uniform fashion. First things first, give it a good shake. The ingredients are actually 3D. It comes out looking like this. So those like to settle. So I'll flip it upside down. Give it a good shake skis. All right, we wanna make sure everything's spraying out as it should. So I'm gonna spray it Damn, that's perfect. Ooh, I, okay, I'm already hitting my top. And I'm gonna hit the edges first. I'm gonna focus here because I'm gonna have some overspray and I don't wanna have this nice and loaded and fully uniform and then hit my edges because I'll be adding more to the surface. 
So hit your edges first. I'll hit the top of my backsplash, hit those edges, and then I'll feather in the surface or the field of the project. And to properly apply the stone spray, don't just hammer that open and let it blast. You'll leave strips and it'll be really too heavy. You're gonna lightly pump that spray nozzle, give it some spritzes from about 18 to 20 inches away. That way you don't over spray and put polka dots all over your countertop. You want them nice, even, and uniform. Now I'm gonna focus on the top edge of my backsplash. Very light pumps, I'm not applying tons of this stuff. And look how much is already applied on that edge. It's looking pretty good. I'm gonna add a little bit more though. Here we go, let's get the rest of the field and I'm gonna get the bowl, the backsplash, So what I like, you know, it's not too much in one area. It's looking really uniform. I don't see any area, any spots that don't have enough. That sink is gonna look really, really good. I'm gonna give a little bit more just in the sink. I'm gonna let the stone spray dry a couple hours. We're gonna be back to mix up some clear stone coat countertop epoxy. That process is really simple. Only some small hand tools are needed. A drill, a chop brush, a notch trowel, and a heat source to eliminate the air. We'll let that cure. We'll be back to finish this project out with the glossy version of the ultimate top coat. Let this dry and be back for the next step. That looks so much better. It looks really good. Looks great, dude. All right, this stone spray is nice and dry. I'm gonna mix up some stone coat countertop epoxy. I'll mix up three ounces per square foot of project and I'll add a few extra ounces for my backsplash. Be sure to hold your bucket. Let's do this. This step is really quick. It's the easiest part of the entire project. Applying clear epoxy is simple. We'll coat the backsplash, we'll coat the sink, we're gonna let that cure. Project is almost complete. I'm gonna come back with our glossy ultimate top coat. The ultimate top coat will add a layer of durability that will make this vanity last for years and years to come. Let's do this. We're mixing up clear epoxy. Smaller batches are gonna turn white like this. That's air getting incorporated into the epoxy while mixing. It's totally normal. A heat source will quickly remove all this air as soon as we get it out on our project. Midway through mixing, slow the paddle mixer down, rub the sides. That's gonna incorporate any undermixed epoxy. And then pick it back up. Mix for about another minute. Now that our epoxy is mixed, I'm gonna pour it into the center of the countertop, use the notch trowel, trowel the material over itself, that's gonna mix it an additional time, and then I'll start to evenly spread the material using the notch trowel. Once that's complete, I'll grab my chop brush and chop the top, eliminate trowel lines, and mix the material a final time. We know we're gonna have a good mix, we just mix with a drill, we mix with a trowel, we're gonna mix with a brush, that's the most important step when working with epoxy is starting with a good mix and with Stone Coat's three mix method, you're not gonna have any sticky spots. It's gonna lay out perfectly, perfectly smooth. With light pressure, 
Since our stone spray is on the surface of our countertop here, just let this notch trowel glide across the countertop. De-shed this brush, pull on these bristles. If there's any loose ones like that, get them out of here. We want any loose bristles gone. And then we're gonna wet this brush with a residual epoxy. Come into our mass here and start applying this epoxy to those edges. Just painting it on. Gravity's gonna take it down. That's gonna be completely normal. That is cool. I'm just dipping in my reservoir and painting a coating on. I'm making any dry areas wet with epoxy. And then the epoxy that I continue to put up here is gonna flow nice and even. Now throughout the process, today I'll continue to keep brushing out this backsplash and letting it self level, knocking down any runs or ridges. Real light pressure, just glide that brush across the backsplash. We're gonna trowel out the rest of our material over the surface of the countertops. Keep it away from the holes and your sink at first. You wanna to try to get a nice even coating on the countertop itself before letting that start to self-level off. Because once you give epoxy an escape route, it's gonna start to run there. Now I'm gonna take a little mass here over my front edges. Now with your gloved fingers or brush, rub out the edges. Again, making, making any dry areas wet. Get my brush and start taking this epoxy and wetting out our sink now. For best results when going over sinks like this, you wanna put your color effects on the countertop and apply clear epoxy. Why? Because if this was a color effect, if this was a dirty pour in here, all my colors would be running to the sink bottom and it would, it would appear as runs in the epoxy. It's not the best look. Personally, some people can make it work, but I like this look right here where we just made this come to life and None of my colors are running. It looks really pretty and, and like a, a real countertop. So now I'm gonna chop the top to eliminate those trowel lines. This is also mixing the material a final time right on the surface of the countertop. We're gonna use a heat source to remove the air bubbles we incorporated working with the epoxy. A propane torch works as well as a heat gun. We're gonna sweep the project holding the torch head an inch or so from the surface. Keep it moving front to back, side to side. We're gonna to torch the whole project. When using heat to remove the air on small vanities, between torchings, let the epoxy cool a minute or two to keep from overheating with a heat source. Where I'd look for some surface tension would be around the sink lip. I don't see it, it looks really good. And on your edges, you might catch some, but they're looking really well. I'm running the lights from above over the project and it's almost perfectly, perfectly level already. And it's been 10 minutes. Just gonna kind of wet my brush here one more time. Rub my backsplash again. It's looking really good. I'm very happy with how it's looking. Man, that's 
already smooth. I don't even need to do that. Torch the surface. I'm really pleased with how this is laying out. It's been about a half hour, 45 minutes since we mixed. I'm gonna remove the masking that's above the backsplash here. Since I coated up there, I don't want that tape to be now epoxied to the top of the backsplash. So before that's set up, in the next, you know, you got two, three hours to get this off before we're a little too thick to start messing with it. So it's been uh, maybe 35, 45 minutes. We got one booger in there. So to fix this, I got a popsicle stick. I'm gonna split it into two and I'm gonna use it like chopsticks. And there, now I'm gonna check my tape. Make sure we're staying tight, which we are. That's looking really, really good. I'm gonna eliminate some drips here with my finger. This is what's been self-leveling here for the last 40 minutes. I'm gonna stick around the job site here between hours three and four. Now this epoxy is gonna be done self-leveling. It'll be a lot thicker than it is right now. And I'll be able to come rub that and those drips won't come back. There'll be no reason to sand the next day. That's how you get rid of drips. You wait between hours three and four, rub them with your fingers, rub them with a popsicle stick, eliminate them. No more will continue. And you're gonna have a nice coating on the bottom side of your countertop to protect it, as well as no sanding the next day. We let that dry, bro, and we'll be back tomorrow for the next step. Woo, it's looking good. Nice. The clear coat is laying out really nice. I'm gonna turn on this space heater. I'm gonna aim it away from my vanity. A pro tip to make that epoxy lay out perfectly smooth, turn off the central heating and air. If you had a vent above the vanity, you would not want that blowing on fresh epoxy as it cures, it can cure it rippled. So take a heat source, because it's really, really cold here in Oregon right now. I'm gonna go on high and I'm gonna aim it away from my vanity. It's gonna warm up this room. I'll keep this on, I'll keep the temperature between 65 and 70 for the first few days of curing. We'll be back for the next step, which is the glossy ultimate top coat. See you in a minute or 18 hours. All right, I'm back for the final step in our epoxy countertop system, the ultimate top coat. We're going glossy version. Man, that sink got coated pretty dang good. You know, this, this vanity could be completed right as is. I'm gonna grab my 220 grit sandpaper. I'm gonna sand the backsplash sink and surface and edges, clean the dust off, and then I'm gonna apply the ultimate top coat, glossy version. Let's do this. The process is the same. We're gonna do wet roller and dry roller. The only difference, we're gonna add additional water to thin this material out. The high gloss version comes a little bit thicker. We're gonna add a little extra water to overcome that. Before mixing the ultimate top coat, you want to shake part A really good. There's some ingredients that like to settle, so I'll even flip it over and give it a good shake. All you need to mix is a mixing bucket and a mixing stick. We're going to follow this two to one little ratio chart right here. I do not need much material here of the ultimate top coat for this little vanity. Add in part B. Okay, perfect. We're gonna thoroughly mix our top coat for about a minute or two. My material's a little cold, so I'll extend that. I'll check that out. That's quite thick, right? We're gonna add some water and thin the top coat to be about the consistency of latex paint, a thick latex paint. So key is too, is add a little water at a time. It's starting to come off much easier now. Still a little too thick. The 
this probably will do it. All right, we're gonna take our mixed top coat. We've thinned it with water and pour it into our paint tray. So I'll completely saturate my roller and then I'll roll a bunch of the material off. Nice even roll and then apply heavy to the sink. Come in for some more material. Barely any pressure is what I'm doing here. Let's get this material out and the rest of the top too. I'm hitting my backsplash tops and vertical edges. Now I'm gonna go and remove material with this wet roller, aiming for a consistent finish. Now I'm gonna switch to a brand new dry roller and start to remove excess material. Switching over to a new four inch, quarter inch nap roller to get out my lap lines in my sink. Just real easy, easy pressure, it's looking good. So this is a brand new dry roller and I'm going with very light pressure. coating around this sink. Right, the ultimate top coat goes on milky, but this is gonna dry crystal clear, have a nice shiny finish, and look really, really good when it's all done. I'll be back tomorrow to show you guys the final shots and wrap this project up. and plumbing are back in. The vanity is complete and ready for use. Day one, I prepped the floor and cabinets. I took out the plumbing. I used TSP to clean. I lightly sand and applied the bonding primer. Then I applied two coats of a custom gray undercoat by combining some white and black. 
I let that dry, then sprayed on the stone spray. That took about a total of 30 seconds to apply the stone spray to this project. The next day, I spent a little over one hour on site applying a clear coat of stone coat countertop epoxy. The next day, I sanded, cleaned, and applied the ultimate top coat glossy edition to this project. Let that cure. That took me about another hour, under six hours in total to complete this vanity upgrade on site in a single weekend. Guys, you can do this too at home. Follow along with me step by step. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned some tips and tricks that are gonna get you started to renew your cultured marble vanity from the 1970s. Thanks for watching everybody. Remember from Stone Cold Countertops, you got this, and we'll see you on the next video.